often is hard and sending crewed spacecraft to other planets will be even harder one of the major challenges in deep space travel is the question of power since at present spacecraft have to take all their required fuel with them when they leave earth NASA wants to change that as NASA forges ahead to the moon and eventually to Mars the agency is counting on private industry to help advance the exploration frontier on Tuesday July 30th NASA announced new partnerships with various aerospace organizations aimed at advancing technologies which could be critical for future missions the agency is partnering with more than a dozen US companies including SpaceX and Blue Origin and more on 19 different technology development projects this round of space act agreements SAAs shows a heavy focus on technologies and concepts that could benefit exploration of the moon and deep space more generally including lunar landers food production reusable rockets and more in October NASA put out a call for proposals from the industry asking them to detail different technologies they'd like to develop through the program now the companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin that have been selected will work with various NASA centers which will provide their facilities expertise hardware and software the main goals of the partnerships involve further spurring the commercial space sector and helping to mature technologies that could benefit NASA and the nation down the road NASA's proven experience and unique facilities are helping commercial companies mature their technologies at a competitive pace Jim Reuter associate administrator of NASA's space technology mission directorate said in a statement we've identified technology areas NASA needs for future missions and these public-private partnerships will accelerate their development so we can implement them faster in this video engineering today analyzes why NASA partners with SpaceX and Blue Origin for future moon technology let's get into details one of the big winners of the initiative is Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin which has three development partnerships with NASA through the program the company recently unveiled a lander concept called Blue Moon to take humans to the lunar surface now Blue Origin will work with NASA's Langley Research Center in Virginia and Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama to develop and evaluate materials for possible use on lunar landers rocket engine nozzles the company will also partner with Johnson Space Center in Houston and Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland on two separate projects one project will develop navigation and guidance system for precise moon landings and the other aims to develop a new power system that could help keep its blue moon lander up and running during the moon's nighttime a two-week period of total darkness during which temperatures can plunge to negative 280 degrees Fahrenheit negative 173 degrees Celsius meanwhile SpaceX is also working with NASA through the announcement of collaborative opportunity program to develop technologies that will be vital for the company's future Starship rocket put simply all 19 awards are great and will hopefully result in tangible products and benefits but Elon Musk's SpaceX has a track record of achievement on the cutting edge of aerospace that simply has not been touched over the last decade as such the company's two space act agreements are some of the most interesting and telling both ultimately focused on enabling SpaceX Starship launches to and landings on the moon and any number of other destinations in the solar system perhaps more importantly it signals a small but growing sect within NASA that's willing and eager to acknowledge Starship's existence and actively work with SpaceX to both bring it to life and further spaceflight technology in general one agreement focuses specifically on vertical landing large rockets on the moon Elon Musk's company SpaceX will work with NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on how best to land Starship on the moon while the other more generally seeks to advanced technology needed to transfer propellant in orbit SpaceX will also work with the Marshall Center and Glenn Research Center in Cleveland on ways to transfer propellant in orbit 
tech that could aid the development of SpaceX's Mars colonizing Starship vehicle. In this particular round of Space Act agreements, they will be non-reimbursable, bureaucratic speak for a collaboration where both sides pay their own way and no money is exchanged. According to a SpaceX spokesperson, we believe SpaceX's fleet of advanced rockets and spacecraft, including Falcon Heavy and Starship, are integral to accelerating NASA's lunar and Mars plans. The future SpaceX Starship rocket is currently being developed at SpaceX to take cargo and humans to deep space destinations. Now SpaceX will be getting help from the agency to figure out how to land large rockets like Starship on the surface of the Moon. And the company will also study how much lunar dust these landings kick up. The large rocket on the Moon and attempting to understanding just how the Moon's powdery regolith will respond when subjected to the plume of a Raptor engine. Put simply, the task of landing a spacecraft as massive as Starship has never been attempted on the Moon, and the process itself, irrespective of any potential surprises from plume-regolith interaction, poses some obvious challenges. In the most basic sense, SpaceX Starship is massive. According to the 2018 dimensions, it will stretch 55 meters, that's 180 feet, from nose to tail, be 9 meters, 30 feet in diameter, and weigh 85 tons, that's 190,000 pounds, empty, and upwards of 1,350 tons, 2.95 million pounds, fully fueled. For reference, that's almost 80% as tall and more than two and a half times as heavy as an entire Falcon 9 rocket. In the history of lunar exploration, Apollo's lunar module, including landing and ascent stages, is the heaviest vehicle to have ever landed on the Moon, weighing a maximum of 5,500 kilograms, that's 12,100 pounds at landing. As such, an expendable Starship landing on the Moon with zero propellant for a possible return to Earth would easily break the record for landed mass by a factor of 10 to 20. Aside from the mass of SpaceX Starship, there's also the question of how to gently land the spacecraft in the first place. Lunar gravity is roughly one-sixth of Earth's, meaning that, say, Raptor's thrust 200 tons would equate to more than 1,200 tons of effective thrust on the Moon, a more than 10 to 1 thrust-to-weight ratio. For reference, the Apollo lunar mission descended stage was powered by an engine with about 10,000 pound force, that's four and a half tons of thrust, that could throttle as low as 1,000 pound force, or 0.45 tons. Meaning that even in lunar gravity conditions, the lunar module could have a thrust to weight ratio of less than one. For the purpose of safely landing on the moon and ensuring a gentle landing, that's an extremely desirable thing to have. Much like Falcon 9's upper stage features, cold gas nitrogen thrusters to settle its propellant before MVAC ignition, SpaceX Starship will likely need a similar system. Additionally, SpaceX is getting NASA's help to figure out how to transfer rocket propellants in space something that's an absolute necessity for Starship to simultaneously be fully reusable and capable of landing significant payloads on other planets or moons. Ever since SpaceX CEO Elon Musk first revealed the company's Mars-bound launch vehicle in 2016, it's incorporated in-orbit refueling as a foundational feature. The SpaceX Starship design calls for the vehicle to get filled up with propellant while in orbit around Earth, so that it has all the fuel it needs to break free of our planet's gravity. Developing ways to transfer propellant in space could also be a game-changer for other companies beyond SpaceX. For instance, many companies are hoping to mine the Moon's water and turn it into rocket propellant that can be stored in so-called depots in space. That way, rockets could meet up with these depots and refuel to travel farther distances. 
But the only way this concept works is if engineers can develop autonomous spacecraft that can transfer super cold and sometimes volatile propellants in space. Something that's particularly difficult in an environment without gravity. NASA has been working on this technology and a few spacecraft have already demonstrated this capability in space. But the process is far from mature. That's not to say that Starship will be useless without refueling. According to SpaceX VP of Sales, Jonathan Hofeller, Starship will be capable of launching more than 100 tons pounds, to low Earth orbit and 20 tons pounds, to geostationary transfer orbit GTO, more than enough to satisfy every commercial demand currently in existence. However, with one or several refueling missions, SpaceX Starship should be able to turn 100 tons to LEO into 100 tons to the surface of Mars or dozens of tons to the surface of the Moon. Put simply, with reliable and fast refueling, Starship goes from being a major step forward in reusable spaceflight to the key to the solar system and to radically affordable deep spaceflight. The other selected companies are Advanced Space of Boulder, Colorado, Vulcan Wireless of Carlsbad, California, Aerogel Technologies of Boston, Spirit Aerosystems of Wichita, Kansas, Anisphere of Belgrade, Montana, Bally Ribbon Mills of Bally, Pennsylvania, Sierra Nevada Corp of Sparks, Nevada, Maxar Technologies of Palo Alto, California, Aerojet Rocketdyne of Canoga Park, California, and Colorado Power Electronics Inc. of Fort Collins, Colorado. Maxar will also work to develop some potential key space technologies, including new types of solar panels and robots that can assemble themselves while in orbit. And some groups will work on technologies related to reusing rockets, something that SpaceX has focused on in recent years. For instance, Sierra Nevada will work on a method for recovering the upper portion of a rocket after it launches from Earth, a feat that SpaceX hasn't attempted yet. All of these technologies sound very exciting, and some are crucial for achieving NASA's goal of sending people to the Moon and Mars. However, these partnerships are just getting started, and it's unclear when any of these technologies will reach operational status. NASA's 2024 Crewed Moon Push is part of the agency's Artemis program, which aims to establish a long-term, sustainable human presence on and around the Moon over the next decade or so. If all goes according to plan, such work will inform humanity's next giant leap, a crewed mission to Mars, which NASA aims to pull off in the 2030s. The space agency plans to make all this happen with the help of private industry and international partners. Ultimately, NASA is hoping that by giving some assistance to the industry, the agency can avoid the high cost of independently developing these capabilities and then reap the benefits of these technologies when they're fully grown. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.